Hi everyone, my name is Omar and welcome to this fourth and final video of this tutorial series. Previously we created an application and put it into a container and pushed the image into a container registry. Now we'll focus our attention into creating a CI CD pipeline with GitHub Actions in order to keep our web app up to date every time we make a change. For sure, this is not the only way to approach automation, and uh, the, but the purpose of this entire video series is just to show you one way to do things. But when we talk about automating processes, there are so many different approaches and there's always gonna be a better way to do things. Keep that in mind. All right, so let's finish strong and let's add a little bit of DevOps into a mix. I think you will like it. All right, so let's start by creating a folder at the top level of the repo and we will call this ARM templates. This is where the Azure ARM tools extensions in Visual Studio Code will help us with the syntax. So let's create a file called webapp.json inside the ARM templates folder. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to create ARM templates, but the idea here is that you can start typing the word ARM and uh, with a couple of clicks, you can import the schema for ARM templates. So you can start creating your resources. But for reference, you can use the ARM template that I have created under this link. But if you go here to the resources at, at your left, you will see uh, that if you click on resources, you can add the resources right directly from there. And you will see like the schema of what is required in order to create that resource that you're trying to create. Okay, now uh, after we copy and paste the uh, ARM templates from the reference file that I just, uh, from, the, from my GitHub account, I will go ahead and create my parameters file as well. And uh, we'll change the names accordingly and and remember that for the web app, value has to be unique. Once I updated the values, here I will delete the comment part where it says to do. And I will save it and I will run git status so we can see the files that are pending to commit. Now, if you recall in our first video, I mentioned that since we will be committing our code into a repo, I don't necessarily want to include some files listed here for example, or virtual environment. So how can I avoid that? It's really easy to do. Just open the git ignore file and add a line for dot VS code and the star V E N B slash. So the star means that, you know, everything that um, it ends with VENV, just go ahead and omit it uh, in order to avoid pushing these files into the repo. And notice that as soon as I save it, the files or the folders just grayed out when I save the file. Once we have our template and we added the files we wanted to avoid, let's go ahead and commit our code into our repo. You can run git status and you will see these files are pending to commit. Okay, so let's run git add space dot and then we will run git commit minus m and you start uh, opening quotes, right? You added the message for like initial commit, for example. And then go ahead and git push. Now that uh, we push our changes into repo, let's check our repo. And uh, you will see that our code has been committed successfully. Now let's go to the repo and click on the settings tab and we'll be adding a couple of secrets in order to consume them when we create the pipeline. And let's go ahead and add the following. Uh, we'll add uh, Asher underscore SP for service principle. And for the value on this one, you can run the command that I'm going to provide here and just copy the value and we'll paste it in, in the value field for, for the secret, including the brackets. 
Now let's create three more secrets, the registry password, the registry URL, and the registry username. And these values comes from the Azure Container Registry you created earlier in the Azure portal. Okay, so let's go and create our pipeline by going into the repo and click on the Actions tab. Let's click on New Workflow and set up a workflow yourself. And for the purpose of this exercise, we'll copy the workflow that I already have in my repo, but we'll go over real quick and uh, we'll make some changes in the environment variables. So basically what I'm showing here is that this pipeline will trigger every time we commit code into our branch called main. We have a section called environment to specify some variables like the Azure Web App, Resource Group, etc. And this is what we are doing here so we can consume them later in the steps listed below. Notice that the container registry is consuming the secrets from the registry underscore URL we added earlier. There are a couple of steps. First, we are authenticating to Azure by using the Azure underscore service principle secret we added earlier. And then we will use the Docker login action to use the registry URL, username, and password. And then we'll build and push the image by running the command cd change to the directory where the docker file is and then we'll run docker build and docker push next step is to create the web app with the templates we created at the beginning of the video after the web app is created we set the application settings for from the web app in order to authenticate with the registry deploy the web app for a container and then we'll create a webhook from the container registry to the web app. Remember, the idea here is that after we make changes in our repo, the pipeline will push those changes so the web app will point to the latest commit ID in the Azure Container Registry. Let me also change the variables real quick in the environment section of the pipeline so we can continue. Also, before I forget, we need to add the Azure website into the allowed host section so let's go into the settings.py file. Let me do that right now and add our web app there in this way. We'll need to add the changes again and push them. But since there is a difference in the commit here between the last push and we save the GitHub actions workflow from GitHub, the changes will be rejected if I push the changes immediately. So how do I approach that? Well, let's add the changes locally with git add space dot so we don't lose them and now we'll run git pull to grab the changes from github and now we will see the full fo a folder called github at your left let's commit the changes and we'll proceed to run git push to push the changes into github i hope that makes sense is one of those tricks you learn through the process It looks like I made a mistake here, so let's check and see what's going on in the, in the pipeline. It says Django PRJT, no such file or directory. Oh, I see. Let's go back to our Visual Studio Code and open the main.yaml file. And let's go to the build and push the image step and see. Yep, there it is. So let's change to the correct name. Let's save and commit the changes once again. The pipeline ran successfully. Now let's go to Azure to check our resources. Our web app is up and running, but keep in mind that changes might not happen really quick. So let's stop and start or web app to see if that fixes. There you go. Now our blog is showing up and running. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio Code and change the background for the website in the base.html file. Let's change the background to, I don't know, green, why not? Let's save, add, and commit our changes to the repo and let the pipeline run.
Okay, so the pipeline succeeded. Let's go ahead and check the block. And after a few minutes, there you have it, folks. We have made a change and the automation ran successfully. So our web app is up and running and uh, with the color that we just added. All right, folks, thank you so much for spending time with me. It has been fun and amazing journey. To summarize, we basically created a Django application. We put it into a container and then put, we pushed the image into a container registry in Azure. And then we added a little bit of DevOps by creating a CI CD pipeline with GitHub Actions to automate the process. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Please subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more content in the near future. Thank you for watching and see you in the next time.